Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorian. Welcome to the Post Politics Podcast. Now, what you can start by saying, what are you talking about, Eric? We're not post politics. Everyone is talking about politics. Everyone has gone completely insane about politics. People can't stop talking about it. I'm kind of done hearing about it. And you know, the thing is, um, the thing that's so interesting about today's society is we might talk more about politics and the average person might be more engaged and more interested in politics than ever. But the political discussions that we have today are a lot smaller in scope than what they were 50 or 100 years ago. Think about the old clashes between socialism and capitalism and neoliberalism, you know. In the old days, people were going crazy discussing uh, all kinds of extreme utopias. But today, most discussions center around, should this group have $6 more at the end of the week in the salary? Should this group uh, have this tax cut of $100 every year? Or should that group get this small bonus that they didn't have before, you know? Today's kind of politics is a lot smaller in scope than what it used to be. And that also means uh, the value of uh, politics has diminished. You know, people who are looking to get the big, grand, extreme ideas through political discussions, they're not going to get a lot out of our political system and our political society today. Because, yeah, you can't really use a parliamentary de democracy to change the world in a way you think. And this has become more and more obvious. The fact that we can have a person like Donald Trump for more than four years in office with so little happening in the world and so few changes made says a lot about our society. You know, 100 years ago, maybe we'd have a nuclear war on our shoulders and we'd have uh, like uh, some kind of extreme revamp of our society because he'd be able to do whatever he wanted to and the shackles that are on today, the bureaucracy today, the uh, complexity of our society today is just too huge, too insurmountable for a person like Donald Trump. So that means he can't really navigate the landscape and he can't really create the kind of ideology or world that he wants and he can't really put through the ideas that he hopes for. He can't build the wall that he wants. You know, he can't make or design the kind of reality you want to. Now, what I want to talk about today is really an extreme people, extreme mindsets, extreme ideas. And what I found is in the wake of our society becoming more and more moderate and our political parties becoming more and more the same, a huge group of people have become woke, quote unquote. And that means that they believe more and more in extreme kind of conspiracies, uh, global elite, uh, um, chemtrails, you know, all kinds of conspiracies, flat earth, you know. The world is kind of uh, developing this kind of outsider group of people that simply do not believe anything. Covid was a big hoax, Covid doesn't exist, the tests have been manufactured, people are gonna get vaccines with microchips in them, people are gonna get mind controlled, people are gonna uh, be transformed into zombies, uh, the, ma the masks people wear, they give people uh, cancer, or lung issues, you know, uh, people are going increasingly, what should you say, insane over uh, this kind of world that feels uh, more and more pragmatic and more and more boring. And I can understand this kind of appeal for drama. I can understand this kind of longing for, you know, a socialist utopia or this new neoclassical society or neoliberal worldview. I can understand people that dream of big change, anarchy, libertarianism, you know, this kind of huge revamp of our society. Uh, and I can understand that there is a huge group of people out there that really just get attracted to these kind of ideas. So what I want to argue is, and this brings me back to an experience that I had just yesterday. Yesterday I was in the grocery store in the Netherlands and you know, in the Netherlands they currently advise people to wear masks and they advise people to wear masks because uh, there is a huge growing number of cases of COVID and it's growing out of our control again. And it's almost back on March, April levels and we do want to contain the virus. 
and we want to avoid healthcare from becoming overwhelmed by cases and sick people, and we want to keep the dead from growing, basically. However, a lot of people, of course, take issue with wearing these kind of masks. And so yesterday when I was in the grocery store, yeah, I wore a mask. It was the public recommendation. Most other people wear a mask. And yeah, I thought, okay, I'll wear a mask as well. Now, what happened was uh, there was a guy in the store who wasn't wearing a mask. And he got really upset, you know. He saw me wearing a mask and he got really upset. And he said, that's dangerous. And he pointed at the mask. And I said, why? And he said, it kills your brain cells. And uh, I said, no, it doesn't. And he said, yes, you have to read up on it. And he had this kind of manic look in his eye. And I thought, honestly, the exchange itself was not that interesting. Um, but I thought the manic look he had in his eyes when he was talking to me, the kind of sheer tension, the panic he felt, the kind of anxiety he felt about uh, wearing a mask or people wearing masks, that was interesting because in many ways I believe today that extreme political ideas are not the result of uh, yeah, people's political beliefs or upbringing or society so much as it is today about your mental well-being and how you're feeling as a person and the anxieties and paranoia and the worries that we can carry as people, you know. The more extreme our mindsets and our beliefs, often the more we struggle with anxiety or stress or fear or worries because of the world we're brought up in or because of the experiences of, that we've had. And um, so I wonder why are we always getting so caught up in the political discussion, you know, talking to flat earthers, talking to uh, people who are against vaccines, talking to people who have extreme beliefs about these extreme beliefs. Why are we not talking to them about mental health? And so what I would like to propose is when you're dealing with people who have crazy ideas or paranoia regarding a political situation, uh, fears about immigra immigrants or whatever it is, you know, I mean, you can discuss the political points of this all, all you want and there might be some points that are valid and there might be some that are wrong, but sometimes I think it's better to take a step back and just go, how are you doing? You know, how are you feeling? What's happening in your life right now? Who do you have to talk to about life and what is going on at work and how is your situation right now in your studies? How are you feeling about yourself right now? What's your image, you know? How do you see yourself? How do you see your life? What are your ideas for the future? Do you have any goals or plans or aspirations right now? Because that's a lot of time the step forward. What I found is people that are unemployed, people that don't have anything to do, people that are stressed about their financial situation are a lot more susceptible to pick up on any kind of extreme or radical ideas or politics because they feel extreme, they feel radical, they feel anxious, they feel turmoil inside. And so perhaps what we should be doing is not just going around advocating for our politics or scre having screaming matches about to people about what views are the best. What we should be doing is we should be investigating more about therapy and how to help people and how to get people into jobs and what we can do to improve the welfare and what we can do to uh, yeah, promote innovation in our society to come up with new technologies that can help people you know all those kind of things you know I'm not necessarily talking about it from a social democratic perspective or just overall uh, whatever you want to do or wherever you come from in the political spectrum you know what can you do uh, to make society better for people what can you do to promote mental health and well-being through what you do through your work through your career through society through education whatever it is so yeah, that's the point I want to end up today. Do you agree with me or would you do something differently? Or how do you see extreme ideas and extreme politics? And what do you think about the political landscape today? Thanks everyone for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.